the end of the day, it kind of doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> it, 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 like, if you are getting close to failure, that's what matters. What is up, YouTube? We are here, Allen, Texas, Destination Dallas. We are going to get a push day today, a little bit of shoulders to start some chest work and then um yeah when it's all said and done after some arms we'll get some posing practice so but we are sitting at 221.2 today so overall since the beginning with nick lost about five pounds of well i don't want to say just fat but we're definitely getting bigger in the right places and getting smaller in the right places so um trending in the right direction and we still have a pretty decent way to go so, uh, yeah, let's get in there, get warmed up, and get moving. You want to like, hit like a warm-up set or? Okay. I usually have been doing like 155, 160. Yeah. So okay. warm up with so just one. Let your arms go out just like you just would like a dumbbell. That. Yeah. Good. Uh, does he feel okay? Yeah. I don't ever lean forward either. Do you? And you want me to come up just above parallel? I like, I don't, I don't know why I don't tend to keep my hands out like that, but I guess I'm always worried about just running into this. Yeah, and you can always face backwards too. You wanna stay here? You wanna? Yeah, you can stay here. Push it wide. 14. One more. Come on, get it up. 15. Good shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. grass in here, dude. You roll around the grass before you came in here? No clue. <laughs> Couldn't even tell you. But you got to make sure the gut is in a good spot. It's not just about drinking a super green thing. Yeah. You know? Use supplemental. It's yeah. a supplement. It's not a replacement, yeah. right? And that's, I mean, I'm, I'm good on vegetables. I eat vegetables with pretty much, pretty much every meal. Yeah. I'd go. I don't know how adjustable some of these seats are, but on the selectorized yeah, stuff, you can't move. adjust no, anything. Yeah, okay. Low. Just wanted to get a, another feel for that external yeah. rotation. Yeah, good. I like that. Yeah, it's just going to line up a little bit better. You don't get that same kind of like pinch you might at the top of the other shoulder. Yeah, yeah, but I've noticed like sometimes I worry about putting the seat too low and leaning back too much to like turn it too much into an incline, but also just that rib flare. And then like, again, too much like internal rotation right. in that bottom position, like coming down so low. Right. So I usually will set the seat up high, yeah. you know? Well here, like, because of all the setup there, it's like if you start too low, you're starting like yeah. way down here, which is not how far you need to come on a, on a press. Yeah. Stop right before you hit the bottom. Right there, back up, good. Yeah. One more. Good. How's that feel? Uh, the range of motion feels short, but I might have just been going too long, too much before, honestly. Yeah. Think about pushing the feet in the floor as hard as you can. Uh, 
two, three, four, come on, five, just beating the floor hard, six, seven, good, push hard, eight, nine, good, dig in, one more, Ten. good. I need to get some new vans, these are slippery as shit. Tuck that elbow forward. Five, six, better. Seven, good. Eight, come on. Nine, ten, push those feet to the floor. Eleven, one more, come on, buddy. Good. The feet being the floor is one of the like that's to get your power, right? Yeah. One thing that we, I guess I asked you a lot about because the prime machines that we both have is the concept of like, where should you optimize? If you have the ability, where should you optimize the majority of the load, right? So like being able to put, you know, a plate on one, a plate on three, and like the importance of loading in, you know, the most lengthened position versus I think a lot of times, especially beginners, really focus on how much they can load in like the contracted position where it feels good, right? Like right. you do bicep curls and everyone kind of just wants to do this because they can feel it really right. well, as opposed to like, getting into full length, getting into full tension. Where you load it kind of depends on where it is in the session, right? So like, I don't see anything wrong with like, if I was to have you do a shoulder press first, do it in middle and bottom, right? So like overloading the shortened position, right? Um, but now that we've kind of already taxed the shoulder a little bit, I would rather do mid and then move it up to the lengthened towards the end of the set so that we can keep that weight higher uh, and not have to reduce load but still do more reps with the same amount of weight, right? So it's like, it's a matter of where it is in the session. It's a matter of like what muscle group we're looking at. I'm not gonna overload the short position on like a row or something because that's typically where things are gonna be the hardest for us. At the end of the day, it kinda doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> it, 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 like, if you are getting close to failure, that's what matters more than like where you're putting weights on the pegs. So like people really overthink this. But one way that we can kind of like optimize is like, First set, first set or two, do mid range, like put everything on the middle peg and then go into the lengthened overload where like on the shoulder press that we're doing now, um, making it to where it's harder at the bottom, easier at the top, where we've kind of already like worked the shoulder. It might be more difficult for you to get to that position. So it's like working with the body to like kind of match the things that are happening. What is your, uh, what is your opinion on like lengthened partials? Do you think there's a place for that with beginners? And I guess really at what point do you think something like a lengthened partial is effective or appropriate in a program? I mean, first you need to know that you can take a regular set to where it needs to go first. Like I don't, as you've seen, I haven't given you any intensifiers yet. And you're someone who like I know can execute well, but like I want to see how far you can go with just a straight set. So like the way I, the way I see it is like, uh, when we look at adding in intensifiers, whether it's partials or rest pause or whatever it is, like it's something that I make people earn. Like I need to see you be able to take something where it needs to go. And then, all right, cool, you're at that point. Like let's go a little bit beyond failure. Let's make sure you can take it there. Partials aren't a bad thing. Like I like um, stretch partials for like flies or lateral raises or things like that. But um, for the most part, I would prefer to do like if I'm gonna be in a position where like I might end up doing some partials. I'd almost rather do a rest pause. Yeah. It's like, just put it down, take a couple of deep breaths, and then try to get a couple more. Set it down, take a couple deep breaths, try to get a couple more. Like, you're gonna get more out of going through a full range of motion than you would from the partials. But like, there's nothing wrong with doing some partials as well. It's just, you gotta lump it in with, it, it is an intensifier. It is something that takes you beyond just regular failure. Yeah. So it's like, make sure you know how to do a regular straight set first.
I think it's like important for a lot of people to know too, with like the, the, the rest pause too, is how much of it is just, you're giving your nervous system a break. Yeah. As opposed to like, you haven't really, your muscle hasn't failed yet. Right, yeah. Right, like you're never really reaching full like muscular failure. Yeah, this was a perfect example here. Where yeah. Like last set, you did the same weight, but all mid, mid range. Yeah. And you got 11 plus one, it's right? Just the leverage. So now just moving it up to the top, making it to where a little bit dumps off. You kept the same weight here. Yeah. So that we can still get to the top and get more mm -hmm. rate reps, we put some up to the top. So it's like, we don't necessarily have to reduce with something like this. We just need to adjust the strength curve. Mm -hmm. Never like this. I definitely don't like that. How's that angle? What up, Ricky? We like the convergence, like the arsenal doesn't really converge, you know? Pretty light, obviously. Yeah. Warm up? Yeah. Yeah. Don't rush out of the top. Get set now. How's that? Felt oh, good. I probably could go just a little heavier. The uh, the idea that things just need to be bigger, right, as opposed to like proportional and right. symmetrical. It's like, yeah, you're if you're gonna make your shoulders bigger and bigger, the more you have to make your chest. You right. know, yeah. it's like kind of let things just kind of coast a little bit. One, two, three, four. Don't rush out of the top. Six, seven, eight, nine, come on, eight, ten, eleven, chest tall, one more, I got you, come on, drive, yeah buddy, twelve, <sighs> good, how was that? Little tight in the left, a little crunchy, but no pain or anything, just yeah, and that's, it's honestly just on this day. So like doing shoulder work, and then that front delt kind of tightens up. I mean, that's been my experience is like it's more comfortable to, to do chest work and then do shoulder work. But of course, I mean, I'm gonna sacrifice shoulder strength. But if my priority is chest, it might be making more sense. Yeah, I mean like overall, your chest and shoulders are like pretty solid. Like pre-fatiguing, right? Because like, it's, yeah. I mean, it's a degree of front delts are either the issue or not. I could try it, try it out next week and see if it's any different. You've never gone, right? You've never gone. No, I'm gonna go next year though. Information. Maybe we're maybe we're both going next year. <laughs> Keeping it on the hush hush. One, keep the heads down, yep. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, two more at least. Come on, nine, yep, come on, come on I got you. Let's go, drive, chest tall, good. One, two, smooth to that screen. Four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. <sighs> that uh, snuck up on me a little bit. <laughs> you can kind of sit forward still, or. Good. Light. The sensation feels really good. The tension feels really good. It's light. Uh, I probably don't want to go like too heavy. Okay, that was 130. But 
Yeah, I'll probably go. I mean, we see 150, 160. See how that feels? Yeah. Worst case scenario, it's just an extra warm up rep. Yeah, I mean, what you were talking about over there is what I've really been focused on is making sure I'm not getting to doing this, right? Like maybe a good pose, but for like maintain that tension, and drive those biceps together. I feel like it's really easy if I go heavier to really lose that really quickly. But so pinch my shoulder blades back and then just keep the chest up the whole time. Yeah, that feels great. Jam that bicep in the side of your chest. Five. Six. Seven. Control that negative. Eight. Nine. Elbows across. Ten. Good. Come on. All the way together. Eleven. Twelve. Keep pushing those elbows across. Thirteen. Control that negative. Fourteen. Don't speed up. 15. Good. It's tricky too because you know you kind of want to play with that elbow position and like I'll get back and that feels comfortable to keep it bent but trying to make sure when I'm coming through to really like finish with elbow like a little bit of elbow extension and kind of like push away. It's funny I uh, I had uh, posted one of Jordan's things yesterday and Ethan messaged me and he goes this is absolute gibberish and I was like Jordan doesn't post things for people that don't live in the gym. Like this isn't for everyone to just understand. Love that dude though. One. <sighs> Two, I had to watch that video like three times to get those words. And I do this on a regular basis. Five, keep that control. Six, a little slower on the way out. Seven, slower on the way out. There you go. Eight, keep that. Yep, there you go. Nine. 10, 11, come on, drive them together, 12, come on, you got it, 13, come on, two more, 14, don't roll forward, chest up, chest up, yeah, good buddy. I felt so much better. Good. Just good. pausing at the top there, and just, like you said, I mean, it's easy for you want to like pause and then just like fall out but like really emphasizing the eccentric there. Cause I mean, everyone out of safety should probably slow things down as you get to lengthen range, but how easy it is for people to just drop. Right. It, it fits the bill for 90% of your clients. But right. then like I have, like I've told you, I have machines at my gym. Like I'm the only one that uses this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, like, fuck. am I going to pay six grand for this machine and I'm going to be the only one that uses it? Yes. Yeah. Good, come on. Drive them across. 14. Good, dude. I was going to ask you, um, on days like this, when I don't normally ever work out this early, what should I do, like, fueling-wise? Because, I mean, eating a bunch of eggs and stuff and then coming and working out at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. You got to eat before you come in. Cool. Unfortunately. Well, you know what's actually easier is doing the... Because what I did this morning was the oatmeal, just all oatmeal, protein powder, a scoop of peanut butter, and that was it. Yeah. Like you might, you might come over here and do like some, some like cable extra rotation or something like that. To like warm like up, you know. Fluffy warm up stuff. So yeah. it's like I think if we can get some semblance of strength and extra rotation, we can like reinforce better positioning on like some other stuff. So. Yeah. It's like this, this one is much less about weight mm -hmm. and more about like position. getting to that position, right? Yeah and then allowing like slowly over time just getting some more strength and stuff there because it's it's just the same concept we talk about with everything else like the more in range strength we can have the better like that's what's going to help us get mobility mm -hmm. it's like being strong in those positions especially when we're looking at bodybuilding like what movements are external rotation yeah. right like what poses are external rotation right 
the most important ones. <laughs> Right here. Yeah, because I used to, when I worked with Stacy, I would have her, because she had like no muscle awareness when I was working with her. So I'd have her do her poses with a new fit on, yeah. and she was like, it feels so much better. Yeah. Three, two, three, good. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I feel so much better. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Good. Yeah, I'm not like where you pull it really close like that. It's just the consequence of like going heavier than what you can. It's yeah. like, because we almost want to like rotate and pull out, right? Mm -hmm. Just like we would for that back double. What's funny too, because I always talk about like false mobility with people from like a movement like context is like people always want to like get into a shoulder press and, yep. and start pressing like this, right? Because they have yep. vertical overhead mobility. Yep. But it's like, cool, that's all coming from rib extension. Your ribs are flaring. Can you actually keep your rib cage down and still get that overhead extension? So even here, like I'm not getting out as, I'm not getting back as far, but I can feel the muscles that I need to get back further are being right. challenged. Being able to progress the range and quality of the movement as opposed to always just load, load, load. I feel like because when you get that rib cage flaring, it starts feeling a lot like a high pull. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, good. Cool. So I'll hit those uh, overhead extensions okay. and then biceps and then, yeah. Cool. Ah. 
<sighs> Last set. just trying to focus on keeping the chest up. So I'm keeping that length, not coming down and shortening that bicep. I'm trying to make that bicep under as much length and then shorten as much as possible. So um, I'm gonna wait for Nick to get back, hit a little posing, maybe just keep the pump going a little bit until then. Nothing crazy. Even just compared to like yesterday, just how much tighter. All right, rest. Yeah, I mean. Okay, so yeah, um, rough workout, but a good kind of rough. And uh, yeah, love being able to push the upper body, get a little uh, tips, tricks, push myself just a little bit harder. Um, chest day, shoulder day, arms, all the fun stuff all the stuff that keeps the uh the newbies in the gym and uh yeah just fun to hit it on a friday we got a uh pull day tomorrow posterior chain day some deadlifts some upper back some hamstring work um, and hamstrings are still feeling a little sore from maybe even last week but for sure on uh monday leg day so uh yeah looking forward to all that um and we're gonna go eat we're gonna eat some breakfast because uh i mean it's only 10 o'clock but we got out here about 7 30 and uh, after a long training session after a good solid pump and some posing practice we are hungry so um bo alexander adapt fitness well destination dallas today but repping adapt fitness till i die and uh yeah we out like follow subscribe share that would be nice that'd be cool it'd be really sweet of you and uh until the next time bye